Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Grand Theft Auto 3. Last episode we finished off Marty Chonks' missions and he met a rather unfortunate end, but we avenged him for that and this episode we're going to just plow on through the story, starting off with another mission for Joey Leone. So, I would just like to say that uh, some rather awesome people have given me some criticism and I of course listen to all criticism and I've been told not to talk so much about uh, mission objectives and whatnot and talk more about the game in general so I'll try and do that more for you. Uh, so we're at Joey's but before we get on to doing that we're going to head straight on a detour down to Portland Docks And what are we going to be doing here, you might be asking. Well, that'll all become clear in probably two or three minutes. But this is what we are after, this glorious line runner. The line runner is a very slow vehicle, unsurprisingly. However, what is surprising is its very large turning circle. Unlike some vehicles of its size, it is actually very, very bad at turning, and is quite possibly one of the worst in the game. Its height makes the camera do some really funny things when going through short, enclosed areas, making it a very impractical and not very fun vehicle to drive. It's also quite surprisingly lightweight considering how big it is, meaning that it can go off ramps and inclines very easily. And not that it's suited for doing unique stunts or anything like that because of its slow speed, but it is very wobbly and can roll over easier than you'd expect. Also because of this high turning circle, it can take a lifetime to turn around, reverse, and accelerate out of a tricky situation making getting busted a very real possibility when driving this. The Line Runner is not a fun vehicle and I do not recommend it at all. Alright, welcome back. Let's begin the first mission of the day. Alright, we're gonna hit the payroll van. It leaves the edge of Chinatown every day. Bullets won't even dent the van's armor, so get a car and ram it off the road. Now hit it hard, and the punk-ass security guard should bail. Then take it to the warehouse at the docks, and my guys are gonna take over from there. Now it won't be doing its rounds all day, so don't hang around. Alright, so uh, you may have noticed Joey's rather disgusting hand disfigurement. <laughs> but there's nothing we can do for him about that. Uh, so, we're going to display right now the full capacity of the line runner. So what we have to do is we have to find this secure car driving about, and we have to ram it until its damage meter fills up. But we're going to get a wanted level by doing this. So the wanted level appears in the top right there, and they are represented by those uh, police badges. But for the sake of convenience, we're going to call them stars. So you can have six stars in the game, which is as per usual for Grand Theft Auto. And with each incremental star, you will get a sort of a new level of police force. So at the second level right now, the police will start really getting aggressive and will start shooting at us. And being pulled out of your car while on a wanted level by a policeman will actually bust you. And for all intents and purposes, that is counted as a death. So, we're going to hop in the car right now. That was all quick and easy. And that's all thanks to the truck that I prepared. So, I'll edit in the secure car in just a second. See you in a bit. The Secure Car is one of the strongest vehicles in the game, along with the Trash Master, the Fire Truck, the Coach, the Bus, the Rhino, the... you get my point. The Secure Car 
is a very strong vehicle and can ram almost any other off the road with ease. It has a very, very, very low center of gravity, meaning that it will probably never get off the ground. You could go up a 5 foot, 6 foot, 8 foot, 10 foot ramp on this thing and you will never get off the ground. It'll just plow right through it. This thing is so heavy, it could probably destroy the road just by driving on it, although the, it doesn't. So, the Secura car, I mean, it's a slow vehicle, it doesn't turn very well at all, you'll usually have to use your brakes pretty hard, handbrake is next to useless, it won't give you any real advantage. The only thing the Secura car has going for it is that you can spend money on, no you can't, you can get money for spending for driving it into the fucking thing, but you'll know what I mean. Uh, the Secura car is one of the best vehicles. No, it's not. Fuck. Alright, welcome back. We are under attack by the police. What are we going to do about this? Well, there's not a whole lot we can do. We're just going to have to drive to the mission objective marker. So, it's worth a mention that on Portland Island at the start of the game, before you move on, you're only able to get four stars in the game. But later on, we will be able to get the full six, and I believe that's to stop you from getting the guns that the high-level police enforcement carry. So right now, I want to draw your attention to something else. Oh, we have a pager. Okay, it looks like we have another another set of payphone missions. This time by a guy called El Boro, but uh, I like to call him El Burrito, but some might find that horribly racist. But anyway, there's this board here. And that is a list of vehicles in the game that are wanted by that particular garage owner. So, we have a few vehicles that we've already driven that can fit in that garage. And I'm just going to go collect them now. So, I'll uh, see you later when we get the first vehicle. Okay, so we have this secure car here has a few boxes in the back that you can see there with loot written on them. Uh, the Secura car is not an easy vehicle to find in the game. You can usually find it like driving up and down uh, Callahan Bridge, but as that's in a state of disrepair at the moment, it makes them very, very rarely spawn. I find because of the way the random number generator works for car spawning in GTA 3 and also other Grand Theft Auto games, you can find the car you're looking for by driving a similar type of vehicle. So, the Secura car often spawns when you're inside an industrial vehicle. And industrial vehicles have the highest prevalence in Chinatown. There's a strip by Chinatown that these sorts of vehicles usually spawn. So, there we go. It'll get marked off on our list there. Yeah, so, there's kind of uh, tricks you can sort of utilize in order to get the kind of vehicle that you want to spawn. It's not always truly random. Uh, the best results I found for the Secura car was by driving a Trash Master. And the Trash Master itself is also not very easily found. So I was driving around with a mule, I believe, in order to get the Secura car to spawn by proxy of being in a trash master which spawned by having the mule. It's a it's a complicated uh, system that you gotta try and get your head around. But we have another pager message, message here and it's alerting us to the fact that we can bring more secure cars to the garage which I'll drive past in a moment I'll show you. It's where we just were for the previous mission. It's right in there. So that'll open up when we are in a secure car but, as I just said about them being very rare, you'll only get $2,000 for the first one, and then I believe it decreases by $500, the reward, for each subsequent secure car that you take there. 
So it's really, it's very little reward for a vehicle that's very hard to find. But that's number two crossed off the list. That is the line runner completed. So this is everyone's favorite vehicle, the pony. And we're going to send this over the garage as well. If I can drive through here. Oof. It will. Yes, all right. That was some pretty quality driving, if I do say so myself. And let's not ruin it now. Okie dokie. So completing that list, as it says, will give you a good reward. I won't tell you what it is till we've got it completed. Because I wouldn't want to spoil anything for you. And if you really so desire, you could always look it up on Google. But I, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it because then I lose views. Right, so you'll see we are now at the car yard, and this is what I'm looking for, this Banshee. Now, we are going to, like with the line runner, use this in preparation of the next mission, so I will edit in the vehicle showcase for the Banshee, and I'll see you in a bit. The Banshee is the first sports car you're going to find in GTA 3, and it's the only one available to you in Portland by way of fixed spawn location. It's not available around driving in traffic. Therefore, it's the fastest car you're going to get until you move through the story. However, it's probably one of the worst handling cars as well. It'll fishtail at the slightest provocation, and its very lightweight means that it's going to get a lot of air off the slightest of inclines. Meaning that donuts like this are quite possible. However, the handling of the Banshee means that it can often drift very well. And if you're an expert at driving, you'll find it to be a very, very enjoyable drive. Because it can get you out of very tricky situations in a pinch but it's a very hard car to master. Alright, welcome back. We are heading over to El Burrito's payphone right now. And we'll see who he is and what he wants us to do. This is El Burro at the Diablos. You are new in Liberty, but already you are gaining a reputation on the streets. There is a street race starting by the old school hall near the Callahan Bridge. Get yourself some wheels, and first through all the checkpoints wins the prize. Okay, so this is our first taste at racing missions. This is a driving game after all. So the Banshee is your best bet for this mission because it's the only sports car you can actually find on Portland. They won't spawn here no matter what you do. The only one you can get is the Banshee in that uh, window display. So we're going to head over there now and see if we can't beat all the other people in the race. So, again, I apologize to uh, any Mexican viewers for my uh, nickname of El Boro, but uh, I mean nothing by it. So, he is the leader of the Diablos, who are the gang that run the Hepburn Heights area. And, whoa! Okay, so, this mission has a bit of... Alright, I'm going... Well, wait. Fuck. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Uh, I've still got my head set in a different race. So, in order to win this, we have to go through every checkpoint, and then come first. So... Right now I'm a little on the back foot because I thought something else was going to happen, but 
just ignore me. But yes, uh, uh, El Boro, uh, he calls us on the payphone and all the gangs in GTA 3 will give us missions over the course of the game, uh, except for one, and, well, that one will become obvious as time goes on. But some of them call us on the payphone, others give them, give us, uh, missions outright. But yes, what I was going to say, whoa! <laughs> What I was going to say before I got cut off by my own train of thought is that this mission has a bit of notoriety for being quite difficult and I can understand that when the other cars are trying to ram you off the road and stuff it can come pretty hard but if you use the fastest car you can which is the Banshee everything should be okay. You can even probably use a police car in this race it handles better than a Banshee, but it's not as fast. It also has better endurance, so... The only thing you'd really want to use the Banshee for is the speed, but... I mean, without trying to sound too, uh... <laughs> too up my own ass, I like to think I can uh, drive pretty well in this game. So the Banshee isn't usually much trouble for me, is so long as you know when to hit the handbrake and when to use the regular brake, you should be okay and you shouldn't spin out. Just saw a uh, secure car drive past. They're really rare, honest. Even with that really bad moment at the start, we still make it to the end quite comfortably. So there really is no issue there. So, uh, I guess we have time for one more mission. We'll head back to the burrito and we'll see what else he can make us do. So we are uh, given a bit more information than we probably needed about uh, El Burrito's Burrito, but for now all we have to do is grab this spinning briefcase and find an ice cream truck because of course all mafiosos love ice cream. And the best way to get them is to blow them up while uh, procuring some uh, treats. So there's one driving around. St. Mark's, thank God, because they're not the sort of vehicle that spawns very regularly, kind of like the Secura car. But just like the Secura car, they tend to spawn when you're in industrial vehicles. Now, if I could get my car out of the way, there we go. Alright, uh, yeah, so, uh, this is another, fuck you, Ice Cream Man, this is another, uh, another uh, vehicle, so I'll edit in the vehicle showcase for the Mr. Whoopi. See you soon. Considering the Mr. Whoopi's rarity, you'd expect it to be a fairly decent vehicle. But it isn't. The Mr. Whoopi sucks. It's terrible. It's really, really bad. All that it really has going for it is that it can turn corners very sharply, but other than that, there's no reason to drive it beyond simple novelty. You will never find it on the streets, 
you'll never find it in fixed spawns. Your best bet at finding it is probably through vigilante missions or through fire truck missions. But other than to complete the board requirements in the Portland docks, there's no reason to actually go looking for this thing. It sucks. It's a piece of shit. It's just a novelty car, and it's made for a laugh. It doesn't actually have any purpose. It, 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 it's shit. It has a little jingle that you can turn on by using the horn button. It's about as good as you'd expect. It's shit. Oh, it's also really slow. Welcome back, we're just heading into uh, Atlantic Key right now, so this will be over before you know it. It's not a terribly difficult mission. In fact, it's not difficult in any way at all. We just need to park it here and turn on the thing here. <laughs> I just don't know what to call it. The tune, and the tune will bring out the goons. So we'll just wait for them to gather round, make sure they don't spot us holding this giant novelty button, because that would look rather suspicious. So they all flock to the van like seagulls on a pack of chips, and we just blow them all to hell. Alright, and that should just about do it for this episode. Alright, so we're just going to drive this uh, Mr. Whoopi into the garage. I don't know where I'm going to edit this in, so it'll be a surprise. We'll just run everyone down as we get there. There's uh, nothing sadder than being run over by an ice cream car. But, um, well, that's just the order of the day, I'm afraid. So, that'll get crossed off the list, and I'll see you back wherever I decide to uh, put this.